Hello, I'm Perry from Rennet and Rind, and this is uh, another week of Mystery Cheese Boxes. We've been doing this for quite a long time now. Um, we're getting used to lockdown, staycations with British artisan cheese, and lots of you are loving it. I love hearing how much fun you're having with uh, these videos, the cheese. I mean, I've had so many comments that so many people are like, thanks Perry, you've ruined supermarket cheese for me, um, which I take great pride in. Um, so I've got five cheeses once again, all from my maturing rooms in Cambridge. Um, good board again, um, but let's walk, uh, work through the paperwork first. So you've got some tasting notes um, to run you through those. A logo on the back where you find us, a hashtag that everyone would find really useful at the moment. These will walk you all through them. There is a few mistakes that I've done on here actually, and you'll be getting an email from me with this video saying just have a look but basically it's spark and ho i've said go it was an old version i printed off a new one it's my mistake it's been a long 14 weeks maybe and also i wanted to mention another thing from this awesome um account that you can find on instagram and the guys they're called our isles so our british isles but you can find on instagram think our isles and they get, got this awesome print, which is cheese please. And the proceeds go to uh, supporting British farmhouse cheese makers. And um, our Isles is just such a cool Instagram page. It's everything we should take pride in. It's windy, but we're suffice. Um, it's everything we should take pride in in the UK. It's not only about cheese, it's about everything that's artisan and so close to everyone's heart. Dairy farming, meat farming, all that kind of business. If you want to look at some beautiful images of um, picturesque farm fields and stuff like that, that is the place to go. Those guys are awesome and they've done some amazing things over this really difficult period for uh, lockdown and for cheese makers. So yeah, check them out, our aisles, good people. So we're moving to our first cheese and we've had it before, Baron by God, but this one is, uh, so we've been doing younger breeds recently and I've been getting some good feedback about them. Everyone's kind of like them, they're a little bit lactic, but they don't really blow people away. You know, they're kind of there as an entrance. So we put some Baron Bygod in the maturing rooms, a couple of weeks longer, got that breakdown going and got a little bit of gooiness in there, which people pine for and I haven't done for quite a few weeks. So this is Baron Bygod, made in Suffolk, Johnny and Dulcie Crickmore, unpasteurized cheese, cow's milk, um, basically the best soft cheese we have in this country, you know. You know, there's a lot more, but Johnny and Dulcie have got this down. This is a breedamo recipe, um, and it's just beautiful. So we've broken this down a little bit. So um, I don't know if you can see there on the cameras. This one's a little bit more gooey than usual uh, than the other ones, where they kind of got a lactic core. Now those bring out those really under under notes. Let me move that. Thank you, assistant. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so if the more gooeyness you get, you run that risk of getting like the ammonia pushing in and, and, and unpleasantness that's the risk factor that you do you're kind of balancing out but with this obviously I'm good in my field um, and you know I've balanced it out so essentially we've got breakdown happening and very limited ammonia uh, which is great so as you can see normally you get these like cloudy puffy white kind of bloom that you can rub your finger and they'll leave a mark and they're a little bit bloomy that's kind of the young area of the cheeses um, this one has began to break down a bit you know you start to see the kind of translucent gray rind that's underneath and that means that the breakdown has kind of happened um, again so yeah paste yellow as we see you know that's visually that's the first thing we want to do visually it looks um, you know yellow cow's milk smell that's really nice that's um so you, it's kind of like um, there's a savoriness behind it that's there like you know, I, I kind of always like into roast, roast vegetables. It's like that salty element that's in there that's nice. Flavour. Lovely texture. Claggy in a good way. Sticks. And we've got some punchy flavours there. The salt is quite high, which is really nice. I love salt. It's like a beef dripping kind of salt that's there. Um, cabbage cabbage afterward like brussels and all that which is crazy that you can find it in cheese i think i've said it before you know all the weird flavors that come into um, cheese and the fact that milk can taste like brussels sprouts and things like that is from amino acids 
and the rind of the cheese lets out these little tendrils that go down in the cheese they do something special we won't get into that maybe if you come to the academy of cheese we will get well definitely we'll get into that and they kick out these little amino acids and they're the building blocks of complex flavors in everything the holy trinity of of you know beer bread and uh, and cheese you know fermentation uh, beautiful to start off with a little bit more challenging we've got some big flavors here as well so you come in quite um quite quite strong sorry i'll just refer to what i've got next next up is an old favorite of mine this is the same profile as before but it goes really well with the cheeses it's lincoln chipotle unpasteurized an amazing cheese a lot of people think that it's like a swiss alpine uh, cheddar but it's actually a swiss alpine i've said it all before beautiful little islets in the cheese great texture awesome plastic coat rind which they put on there to protect it um, so let's cut it up as I say as always get stuck in you know um, enjoy your cheese don't worry about the kind of elements of that smell pine, pine, pineapple-y I wasn't expecting that obviously I try the cheese every Monday and I wasn't getting pineapples off it so that's a really good sign because that's kind of like the holy grail of poacher of what you should be getting yeah so really nice texture is drier than usual but I'm okay with it I'm not hating it um, sticky clay a little bit of crumble at the end aroma incredible I mean that's like um, it's almost floral a little bit of spiciness at the end chlorine bitterness kind of intermixed in there which is just a really nice combination bit low on the acidity uh, you know the normally from the challenge you find that tang there it's kind of a uh, present throughout the journey but not all the way through so loads of complex flavors going on there i mean the floral and you know vegetal edge is really interesting in that cheese next cheese is a cheese we've had on before which is colleen a goat's cheese uh, made in Ireland by Marion, who's uh, a Dutch lady who came over here, I don't know, it was many years ago. Nobody was really making fine artisan cheese in Ireland at that point. And uh, she set up a school, went around and trained people, and she made this beautiful Gouda type, which is a goat's cheese. It's currently the supreme champion, I believe, of um, Ireland for the best, goat, uh, best cheese, which is totally understandable. Visually, we're looking again we're getting the white in the rind which indicates that it's goat's cheese um, you know that's the key um, you know you can notice this plastic coat rind which is painted on it to protect the cheese it's also reminiscent of Gouda's you know it locks in a lot of moisture so you get a nice cheese so uh, you know as you break it apart you're getting that elasticity that's in there slightly more polyam smell just fresh and creamy really nice totally moorish if you have kids in the house they will like this one just don't tell them it's goat's cheese because most people don't like goat's cheese but yeah sweet nutty light like a you know like a milky base you know just like a kind of weirdly like a milker you know <laughs> just really light the texture is so delicate you know all the other ones they have something going about the last two we've tried but it's like they stay and the Colleen doesn't it's such a light cheese you know you put it on the tongue and it feels a degree lighter than all the rest that you've had it dissipates lovely goaty flavor grassy freshness coming in there the obvious nutty edge with a slight little bit of um like a um a, like a burnt caramel and then the end floral kind of finish beautiful cheese i mean we started stocking that about six months ago i kind of I, i'll be honest with you i kind of wrote it off a long time ago i had it and i was like it's not doing much for me and then i had an event in london where all the cheese makers get together and i had it again i was like what is this i've never had it before tried it i was like jesus we've got to get this back in here which we have done and it's a lovely cheese next cheese one of my favorites spark and hoe red if you've ever had a red leicester from the supermarket it's not a traditional red leicester it's just cheddar with food coloring in it this will change you know if you're used to those flavors it will really change your mind i chose these two because like i was saying this isn't too tangy the um you've got the acidity there with the pineapple but it hasn't got that tang 
where this has obviously the colouring, Anato South American seed, which is broken up into the milk to give her its colouring. It's cloth bound in a traditional way and has these nice little kind of characteristic bumpy edges. That's uh, created by a cheese mite. Don't worry, they won't harm you. I like adding a little bit of characteristic to the rind, so I kind of leave them there. I do a little bit of brushing, but not too much. Smell fresh, musty though. There's a musty edge to it, which is with the age. I mean, that's a good thing for me. You know, you want to know where these guys were living for, you know, 18 months of their life. The, uh, this is um, unpasteurized cow's milk. Similar texture to the clean, actually. Not too dense, more lighter than usual. I'm normally used to something that's a bit heavier with Spark and Home. Tangy edge that's there. Musty, salty veg vegetal kind of notes, like you know, reminiscent of the pan roasted kind of things that are going on. You know, that kind of gravy, bovril kind of end, but more concentrated. High on the salt level again, but we like that. That makes it good for your glass of wine. That'd be amazing with like a dry hot lager, actually. You know, that'd be really nice, kind of cutting through that edge and adding that fruity element there that this one is missing where pineapples was there beautiful cheese i think a lot of people are going to like that last one is a traditional favorite of mine cropwell bishop stilton i mean cropwell to be perfectly honest have been playing second fiddle for many years you know to kind of colston bassett and i have no idea why because their cheese is just sensational at the moment and it has been appearing i get it a lot on my mystery cheese boxes but when it tastes this good I can't not, um, you know, sort of go for it. You've got that beautiful ebony blue coming through the cheese again, which is amazing. You know, that colour texture is, is just it is just brilliant. You know, on this one, you know, on my one in sp specifically, there's a lot of gathering of blue in the middle. So I do want to take a cross cut just to get an idea of what that cheese kind of tastes like all the way through. Good bluing, you know, not as consistent on my piece. But, you know, it's a big piece of cheese. My bit might not be as good, but that's out of that inconsistency. You know, you can't take the good cheese with the bad cheese. What's the old saying? Something like that. Smell typical blue, a little bit salty, nothing too heavy. Dairy, um, that like perfume, perfume edge that blues have. Um, my favourite again. There's so much going on in there. I mean, I don't even want to try and work out. That might take me, you know, half an hour and we haven't got it. You know, the saltiness is there. The spiciness from the blue has come through. It's really well balanced. The texture, I think I said this last time, you know, about the crop well. The texture is just off the chain. It, you know, it's, it's like subtle like the others. Got that density, but with your tongue you just naturally spread it around your palate and you get like a full covering so you know you've got different parts on your tongue which can um, sense sweet salty savory acidity bitterness they're all around there and when you get a good spread on that texture you're kind of singing and you're hitting all those notes the aftertaste is just beautiful that savoriness is just coming through and lasting i would recommend I know there's a few people there that don't like blue. I'd probably give that a go if um, you know if I can convince some non-blue lovers to give it a go. So yeah, they're your five cheeses. Another uh, amazing week of your support for the British cheese industry. We haven't got that long to go. You know the 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 the, the pubs, the restaurants may be open on the fourth. You know. God bless those independents. I mean, they've done an amazing job hanging on through thick and thin, you know, by the, you know, their fingertips, grabbing onto their business, going through loads of really difficult times. Um, I think, you know, the first independent that I go to, it will be independent. It will definitely not be a chain, as you probably realise I'm a big fan of independence and artisan and people. Um, I'll be raising a glass to them because... You know, they have gone through literally hell and they still don't know if they're out of it. And I'll be supporting them greatly and I hope you guys will too. Um, so that's it for this week. 
Um, enjoy your cheese. Enjoy this beautiful weather we're having. Um, if you're going to the beach, stay safe. Um, and um, I'll catch you next time.